Today we will be diving into the creation, adoption, and future of America's rifle, the famous and also notorious firearm designed to give the Western world a fighting chance against the Soviet AK-47. The brainchild of weapon designer Eugene Stoner, it is the one and only AR-15. After World War II, the United States military started looking for a single automatic rifle to replace the M1 Garand, M1-M2 carbines, M1918 Browning automatic rifle, M3 grease gun, and Thompson submachine gun. However, early experiments with select fire versions of the M1 Garand proved disappointing. During the Korean War, the select fire M2 carbine largely replaced the submachine gun in U.S. service, and became the most widely used carbine variant. However, combat experience suggested that the .30 carbine round was underpowered. American weapons designers concluded that an intermediate round was necessary and recommended a small caliber, high velocity cartridge. Senior American commanders having faced fanatical enemies and experienced major logistical problems during World War II and the Korean War, insisted that a single powerful .30 caliber cartridge be developed that could not only be used by the new automatic rifle, but by the new General Purpose Machine Gun, or GPMG, in concurrent development. This culminated in the development of the 762 by 51 mm NATO cartridge. The United States Army then began testing several rifles to replace the obsolete M1 Garand. Springfield Armory's T-44E4 and heavier T-44E5 were essentially updated versions of the Garand chambered for the new 762 by 51 mm NATO round, while Fabrique Nationale submitted their FNFL as the T-48. Armalite entered the competition late, hurriedly submitting several AR-10 prototype rifles in the fall of 1956 to the United States Army Springfield Armory for testing. The Armalite AR-10 featured an innovative combination of a straight-line barrel stock design a new patent-filed gas-operated bolt, forged aluminum alloy receivers, and with phenolic composite stocks resulting in a small arm significantly easier to control in automatic fire than other infantry rifles of the day. It had rugged elevated sights, an oversized aluminum flash suppressor and recoil compensator, and an adjustable gas system. The final prototype featured an upper and lower receiver with the now-familiar hinge and takedown pins, and the charging handle was on top of the receiver placed inside of the carry handle. For a 1950s 7.62x51 mm NATO rifle, the AR-10 was incredibly lightweight at only 6.85 pounds, or 3.11 kilograms, while empty. Initial comments by Springfield Armory test staff were favorable, and some testers commented that the AR-10 was the best lightweight automatic rifle ever tested by the Armory. In the end, the United States Army chose the T-44, which entered service as the M-14 rifle. Based on the M-1 Garand, it held a 20-round magazine with automatic fire capability, which while effective for suppressing fire, was far less accurate than that of the AR-10 during continuous fire. The U.S. also adopted the M-60 General Purpose Machine Gun. Its NATO partners adopted the FN-FAL and HKG-3 rifles and the FN-MAG, and Rhine Metal MG3 GPMGs. The first confrontations between the AK-47 and the M14 came in the early part of the Vietnam War. Battlefield reports indicated that the M14 was uncontrollable in full auto, and that soldiers could not carry enough ammo to maintain fire superiority over the AK-47. While the M2 carbine offered a high rate of fire, it was underpowered and ultimately outclassed by the AK-47. A replacement was needed, a medium between the traditional preference for high-powered rifles, such as the M14, and the lightweight firepower of the M2 carbine. As a result, the Army was forced to reconsider a 1957 request by General Willard G. Wyman, commander of the U.S. Continental Army Command, to develop a 223 caliber 5.56mm select fire rifle weighing 6 pounds, or 2.7 kilograms when loaded, with a 20-round magazine. The 5.56mm round had to penetrate a standard US M1 helmet at 500 meters and retain a velocity in excess of the speed of sound, 
while matching or exceeding the wounding ability of the .30 carbine cartridge. This request ultimately resulted in the development of a scaled-down version of the Armalite AR-10, called the Armalite 15, the AR-15 rifle for short. Please note that the AR stands for the company Armalite, and not the phrase assault rifle, which it is commonly mistaken for today. In 1958, Armalite submitted 10 AR-15s and 125 round magazines for Conarch testing. The tests found that a 5-7 to seven man team armed with AR-15s had the same firepower as an 11 man team armed with M14s and soldiers armed with AR-15s could also carry three times more ammunition than those armed with M14s, a total of 649 rounds versus 220 rounds. The AR-15 was found to be three times more reliable than the M14 rifle. However, General Maxwell Taylor, then Army Chief of Staff, vetoed the AR-15 in favor of the M14. In 1959, Armalite, now frustrated with the lack of results and suffering ongoing financial difficulties, sold its rights to the AR-10 and AR-15 to Colt. Colt, seeing the promise of the rifle, began a Far East tour. They pitched the light, cheap to manufacture rifle to numerous Asian militaries. And on September 30, 1959, Colt made its first sale of Colt Armalite AR-15 rifles to Malaya. Colt manufactured their first batch of 300 Colt Armalite AR-15 rifles in December 1959 and would go on to market the AR-15 rifle to military services around the world. In July 1960, General Curtis LeMay, then Vice Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force, was impressed by a demonstration of the AR-15 and ordered 8,500 rifles. In the meantime, the Army would continue testing the AR-15, finding that the intermediate cartridge 5.56mm rifle is much easier to shoot than the M14 rifle. In 1961 marksmanship testing, the U.S. Army found that 43% of AR-15 shooters achieved expert, while only 22% of M14 rifle shooters did so. In the summer of 1961, General LeMay was promoted to Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force and requested an additional 80,000 AR-15s. However, General Maxwell D. Taylor, who repeatedly clashed with LeMay, advised President John F. Kennedy that having two different calibers within the military system at the same time would be problematic, and the request was rejected. In October 1961, William Godell, a senior man at the Advanced Research Projects Agency, sent 10 AR-15s to South Vietnam. The reception was enthusiastic, and in 1962, another 1,000 AR-15s were sent. United States Army Special Forces personnel filed battlefield reports lavishly praising the AR-15 and the stopping power of the 556 cartridge and pressed for its adoption. By intentionally choosing a slow twist rate, the 55-grain bullet used in the 556 Ball M193 cartridge was only just stable in flight. The damage caused by the 556 bullet was originally believed to be caused by instantaneous tumbling on impact and render a wide, incapacitating wound due to the slow one in 14-inch 360mm rifling twist rate. However, any pointed lead core bullet will tumble after penetration in flesh because the center of gravity is towards the rear of the bullet. The large wounds observed by soldiers in Vietnam were actually caused by bullet fragmentation, which was created by a combination of the bullet's velocity and construction. However, Despite overwhelming evidence that the AR-15 could bring more firepower to bear than the M14, the Army opposed the adoption of the new rifle. U.S. Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara now had two conflicting views. The Air Force's repeated requests for additional AR-15s and the ARPA report favoring the AR-15 versus the Army's position favoring the M14 through the power of nepotism. Even President Kennedy expressed concern. McNamara ordered Secretary of the Army Cyrus Vance to test the M14, the AR-15, and the AK-47. The Army reported that only the M14 was suitable for service, but Vance wondered about the impartiality of those conducting the tests. He ordered the Army Inspector General to investigate the testing methods used. The Inspector General confirmed that the testers were biased towards the M14. 
In January 1963, Secretary McNamara received reports that M-14 production was insufficient to meet the needs of the armed forces and ordered a halt to its production. These rifles would slowly phase out of service, until later being modified into the Mark 14 Mod 2 Enhanced Battle Rifle, a competent marksman rifle still used by Special Forces today. With the M14 now out to pasture, the AR-15 was the only rifle that could fulfill a requirement of a universal infantry weapon for issue to all services. McNamara ordered its adoption, despite receiving reports of several deficiencies, most notably the lack of a chrome-plated chamber. After minor modifications, the new redesigned rifle was renamed the Rifle, caliber 556M16. Meanwhile, the Army relented and recommended the adoption of the M16 for jungle warfare operations. However, the Army insisted on the inclusion of a forward assist to help push the bolt into battery in the event that a cartridge failed to seat into the chamber. The Air Force, Colt and Eugene Stoner believed that the addition of a forward assist was an unjustified expense. As a result, the design was split into two variants, the Air Force's M16 without the forward assist and the M16A1 with the forward assist for the other service branches. This variant of the AR-15 would become the most common and recognizable of the variations over the course of the next 50 years. In November 1963, McNamara approved the U.S. Army's order of 85,000 M16A1s, and to appease LeMay, the Air Force was granted an order for another 19,000 M16s. In March 1964, the M16 rifle went into production, and the Army accepted delivery of the first batch of 2,129 rifles later that year, and an additional 57,240 rifles the following year. Eventually, a new variation of the R15 system, adopted as the M4 and M4A1 service rifle, would replace the M16 as the primary infantry weapon for all U.S. armed services. The Colt Armalite AR-15 was discontinued with the adoption of the M16 rifle. Most AR-15 rifles in U.S. service have long since been upgraded to M16A2 and M16A4 configurations. After almost 70 years of service, however, the Army would hold a contest for a new service rifle. Under the Next Generation Squad Weapon Program, created in 2017 to replace the 5.56 M4 carbine, Manufacturers were tasked to form and develop new small arms and fire control systems for the larger 6.8mm cartridge. The Sig Sauer MCX Spear, or XM7 for the purposes of the competition, would become the unilateral winner of the contest. Its design is heavily inspired by Stoner's AR-15, and in 2023, the first of this new M5 rifle would begin limited deployment in hopes to finally replace the M4, and eventually all AR-15 style rifles in U.S. military service. Thanks to its use by millions of service members during the Vietnam War and subsequent conflicts, along with its cheap cost and easily accessible ammunition, the AR-15 became the most popular rifle in the United States. Today it makes up over 5% of all firearms in the country. Its proliferation has become so great that the rifle is considered the prime example of a common-use firearm under the Second Amendment, making its permanent ban by Congress or constituent states nearly impossible. Thank you for watching History Wiki. It would mean the absolute world to me if you would consider sharing this video with your friends and subscribing if you like the content.